Hi everyone, um, yes, I know it's been a while and I know you heard this before. My last video was uploaded in September 2023 and that was a restoration video. But after I posted that video, basically a series of unfortunate events started to occur. I won't get into the details about the things that happened, but some of them were really scary, some of them were really sad, and some of them were just very annoying. I didn't really have time to work on videos and also, I wasn't really in the mood to make content. Sometimes you just don't feel like it and everything can be a little bit too much. However, not everything on the end of 2023 was negative. Back in September, I met a very special person online while I was gaming. Her name is Caitlin and she lives in the United States of America. We got to know each other very well through gaming, texting, video calls, and um, she always had this wild dream of visiting Europe. Um, long story short, I bought her a ticket and she came over. <laughs> yes, all the way from the United States of America, over the Atlantic Ocean to the Netherlands. It's a long flight, but it was definitely worth it. We spent New Year together and it was absolutely fantastic. We watched the fireworks and everything and for an American, Everything here in Europe is so different. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we had, a, we had a great time together. It almost seems like a perfect story from some kind of romance book or something. Um, but yeah, long story short, again, she is my girlfriend right now. And um, now it's my turn to visit her in the United States. I've never been to the United States before, um, but I'm going to very soon. So, I'm very excited for that, of course. Of course, it can never be normal. It has to be all the way on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. The whole Titanic is between us, historically correct. Um, but yeah, you can control what love does. You will, of course, see her in future videos. There she is, she's texting me right now. <laughs> um, you will see her, of course, in future videos because she is now officially Mrs. History Secrets. I want to say so many things about her, how much she means to me, how, how amazing she is, uh, how special she is, but if I would do that, this video would be hours long. So we're not gonna do that right now. I have to stop myself now because I want to keep talking about her, but I promise you guys a new video, so Let's get right into it. This video is going to be about the German M16 Stahlhelm or steel helmet. The German M16 steel helmet was developed in late 1915 and introduced in the spring of 1916. It was the first modern German steel helmet. So a while back I was able to buy an original M16 German helmet shell uh, which was post-war repainted and stuff like that. So. I decided to make a restoration video about this German helmet. So this is an original helmet that we are going to bring back to its original condition. Let me show you a little bit more about the German helmets. Like this right here is model 1916. This is an original shell as well. Uh, this is the first model liner with a uh, leather band as well. Later models would have the band made from steel. Um, this is a size 66. Um, but this is a M16 German helmet. You can recognize them by, well, first of all, the shape and uh, this, of course, this iconic thing right here, these, these lugs right here, they look very strange. They are vent holes, but they are also actually meant to hold a armor plate if you look outside of the trench. Um, so lots of people don't know why these are here. Uh, they're not just there for fun. They're actually there for a, uh, for a reason. Uh, I'm going to show you the difference between the three models that I have right here. Um, like obviously this, we got that, and we have this for the chin strap. The chin strap is attached, oops, it's loose, but here you can see the chin strap is attached to this right here. So this is the first model, M16. If there would be a steel liner band in this helmet, people will call it M17, even though it's the exact same helmet. So it's basically just M16. This is just the M16. This is, oops, this helmet was reissued in the Second World War. So just forget about the, um, this is a reissue helmet. These helmets were reissued again in the Second World War as well. But let's forget about that right now. We're talking about the First World War. So this is a Austro-Hungarian M17, um, also First World War. The shape is a little bit different and the position of this, boop, this right here, is all closer to each other. See that? 
So that's the difference between the Austro-Hungarian M17 and the German M16. And then, one more thing, we have the M18. The size of this one is a little smaller. But this is the M18, and this one actually doesn't even have that anymore. This has the steel liner band, and you can see this, uh, the chin strap, would actually be attached to the liner band. Um, so not to the shell anymore. So this is, like I said before already, this is the steel liner band, the later model. So M18, latest model. And all these helmets were used again in the Second World War for parade, but also for combat. Okay, so we are going to restore a German World War I M16 helmet back to its original condition. However, our helmet is going to be a little bit more unique. Let me explain you why. So this is a standard German M16 helmet. And as you can see, the paint is very shiny. Of course, the more you wear a helmet and the more you use a helmet, the more shiny it will get. Um, but the paint by itself was already really shiny. So if it would start raining and you would poke your head outside of the trench, it would be just shining and you would be a very easy target. So they had to find a solution to that. On July 7, 1918, General Ludendorff ordered camouflaging of all helmets through the application of paint. So the soldiers were basically ordered to camouflage their helmets. Uh, they had to be different colors, uh, they had specific shades and it was also depending on what season it was and uh, what kind of area you're in. The colors had to be separated with black lines. There's a lot of interesting information to find about this uh, on the internet, of course. I'm not getting into all the small details about the camouflage, but yeah, every, every soldier did this himself. Uh, every unit was different and um, every helmet was unique, like I said already before, every soldier did it himself, so some of them really, really did a lot of work and made it really pretty and stuff like that, and others just didn't care and just were like blah, 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 blah. Anyways, some would mix the paint with sand, uh, that's very smart. Um, we are going to make a typical World War I German camouflage helmet. So the colors we are going to use is going to be like reddish brown, ochre yellow, and dark green. Um, and of course, we're gonna separate the colors with the lines. Let me just stop talking right now. I've been talking enough. Uh, let's get into the video. All right, so what we have here is an original German World War I model 1916 Stahlhelm. I was able to buy this helmet for a very good price. Uh, it's size 62, uh, so it's a little bit too small for my head but we are going to bring this helmet back to its former glory. Let's take a uh, closer look at the helmet. As you can see, it's in good condition, but it's obviously repainted. Um, right here on the back, we can see the paint has chipped off a little bit. It's pretty easy to remove the paint right here at this spot. Uh, but as you can see, this is the actual steel right there. If we take a look on the inside of the helmet right here, we can see this is still left of the actual chin strap. Uh, there should be another one right there, and then, of course, we got the leather chin strap and stuff like that, but uh, we are going to remove this and place a new chin strap here. There you can see how these lugs are attached right there. And we have a size stamp right here. It's kind of hard to see it, but you can see it's stamped right there with the size 62. 62 is the shell size of the helmet. But yeah, so the first thing we are going to do is remove the post-war paint. After that, we are going to respray it and just make it look nice again. Uh, we better hurry up. It's already a bit late, so I better start working on it. All right, so here we have our helmet and obviously we're gonna use gloves. Um, so our first step is removing the paint. I got some paint remover right here and let's see how it goes. We just mix this up a little bit. Looks disgusting and it smells like candy for some reason. Put this stuff all over the helmet on the inside and on the outside. Whoops. This is the only brush I could find for now. I don't have bigger brushes at this point, so. All right, so the outside and inside are now officially covered in paint remover. As you can see, it's a very thick layer. It looks very strange. It smells like candy, it smells really nice. However, I highly do not recommend eating or drinking paint remover. So what we have to do basically now is just wait until the paint is gonna look bubbly and stuff and then we will be able to remove the paint. Right now, I'm going to eat some breakfast and then probably walk my dogs. I'm gonna leave this stuff on here for a couple hours. So yeah, 
Bye for now, helmet. All right, so um, it has been on there for quite a while, but it seems like for some reason it's not really having any effect on it. Okay, interesting. So for some reason, uh, the paint on the inside is pretty easy to remove right now, as you can see. The paint remover definitely did something. But on the outside of the helmet, it barely did anything. Well, we're definitely not done yet. We have a lot more work to do. All right, so I removed a lot of paint from the inside. For some reason right now, when I just cleaned the outside, I do see that it is having some effects at some spots, but I was just wondering, wanted to check something out. I have another old can of paint remover here, and I wonder maybe this one is more aggressive. So let's try that one out as well. Ugh, it looks disgusting. <laughs> oh well, I'm not planning to eat it anyway, so. Alrighty. The complete helmet has been done at this point. Um, George is gonna wait 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer and see what happens. All right, so it's been like 35 minutes, 40 minutes. And look at this, this looks way better. This stuff is actually doing something. Oh yeah, way better. We need some more layers of, uh, of this stuff. I'm starting to see the actual steel right here, and that is really, really good. That's what I like to see, look at that. This stuff is really uh, sticky. But look, if I clean this right here, that's what I'm talking about, that's what I wanna see. You can actually see the steel right here. You see that? Right there, there's no paint left at all. And I don't see any pitting in the shell, so the shell itself is in really good condition. Okay, I can't really show you right now because I'm wearing dirty gloves, so I can't really grab the camera, but I am able to see the size stamp very well and the manufacturer right there, which is really nice. And also a nice stamp right there in the dome of the helmet. Hope you can see it but you can see there is a number. I'm glad it's still uh, visible. There's one thing I know, and that is that this helmet is going to look very nice when it's completely restored. As you can see, most of the green paint, actually almost everything, is gone right now. I'm not really concerned about this white uh, primer, I think it is. That's not really a problem. So what the helmet looks like right now. Looks like a winter camouflage helmet right now at this moment. Here's what we have right now. This is the state, the current state of our German M16 helmet. Um, as you can see, all the green paint is completely gone. Um, we still have some spots with primer, but like I already said, that's not really a problem. Um, of course, we're gonna use some more sandpaper, grind it down a little bit more. Um, something that I also noticed was this. Here and there, you can see some black spots, but it's actually dark paint right there. So these are actually remains of original paint, I think. So that is, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's original paint, but it's not enough to actually save. Um, but still interesting to see. I hope that was not a cannon. Anyways, I can show you the stamps. Right there, you can see R1150. And right here, we have the letter G and then 62. And 62, like I already mentioned before, is the size uh, the shell size of the helmet. Let me give you a close-up, there you can see it. G62. The day is coming to an end, so I'm gonna save the rest for tomorrow probably, but so far I'm very happy with the result. All right, so it's another perfect day, the sun is shining and it's time to use a little bit of sandpaper to make it all smooth and then we are going to respray the helmet shell today. All right, so here we have our helmet, um, completely smooth and ready to be sprayed. It's always a very exciting moment. Let's go. Never mind, we already failed. Never mind, retake. <laughs> We're obviously gonna spray a couple layers, not just one. Why is the wind always going towards my camera lens?
All right, so here I have three World War I model split pins. To install the liner, you need three split pins. One of them is different, and that's this one. This one goes on the back. This one is a little thicker. As you can see, this one, compared to the other two, is a little thicker. Uh, so obviously we're gonna spray these as well. I always use a piece of cardboard for that. Just poke them through like that and just spray them. It's a very easy way of spraying uh, split pins or buttons, uniform buttons, stuff like that. There you go. Basically done already. All right, so at this point, we are actually able to touch the outside of the helmet. Um, it's still not completely dry, but I am more focused on the inside of the helmet because the outside of the helmet is going to change later anyways. A very nice, historically correct color, olive green. Obviously, we have to do the exact same thing with the split pins. There you go. No! Okay, we don't want that to happen. So I need to bring this back inside. It immediately damaged the side. Luckily it was fast enough. Don't do that again. No. No. Stop it. Okay, no, no, no. Why is there always something trying to mess with my project? Like there's no wind at all, and then suddenly, ooh, wind. Why not? Looks good to me now. Gonna bring it inside. Whoop, almost dropped it. Brought this helmet inside really quick. Luckily there's no wind here. Unless suddenly there's a ghost in here or something and something happens. Okay, so here we have our German. M16 helmet, uh, it's completely dry. I love the color, olive green. So what we're gonna do right now is install the liner, which is very, very simple. So what we have here is a liner. As you can see, it's nicely marked right there with 62, which is the shell size. I have been struggling to find a liner. These days, for some reason, it's very hard to find good replica liners. Maybe because of the war going on or something like that. Um, supplies, I don't know, but it's, yeah, they were very hard to find, but finally, after a couple of months, I was able to find a good quality replica again. So that's nice. So it's very, very simple to install the liner. We have our three split pins here. You have these little holes on the sides. This is the back. The back is going to be round, and uh, the sides are going to be shaped like that. And just place it inside. And as you can see, it fits really well. I'm gonna start with the back. As you can see, there is the hole. Now we are going to grab the thickest split pin, which I explained earlier is for the back. We're just gonna push that in like that and then hold our finger right there. Then take a look on the inside. You can see it right there. It's very simple. Just grab it like that and push it like this while pushing on the outside as well. Be sure it's nice and tight. And you do the exact same thing on the side of the helmet. Ow! Fuck. For some reason, I just punched my tripod. <sighs> Anyways, um, as you can see, you just push the liner down a little bit and you can see this gap. You just push it in, hold your finger on it and do the same thing as you did before. This is way easier with World War One helmets and it is with World War II helmets. There we go. Nice and tight. So now we officially have a factory new um, German World War I M16 Stahlhelm, but we're not done yet. We're gonna make it, of course, look like it's been used a lot and we are going to camouflage it. And as you can see, <laughs> this helmet is too small for me. Uh, like I already said before, I always wear 64 or 66, uh, but this is uh, this is too small for me. But yeah, I just bought this helmet pure for display reasons and restoration, of course. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a pencil. I'm gonna start drawing a line and it doesn't matter what it looks like. You just go here and I'll just go down 
right here and then go down here we're going to continue this line over here and we're just going to go here just use your fantasy like there is no specific way like you imagine you're a soldier yourself and you're just doing whatever you think works the best there you go that's a good start in my opinion okay so we are going to start with the yellow and it doesn't have to be that thick like you probably need a few layers depends what kind of paint you're using and it doesn't have to be pretty too the more casual you do it the nicer it's gonna look just doing it very simple like this I mean all these helmets were personally done by soldiers themselves so they're all different what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna do the yellow parts only like, this probably looks very strange but I can assure you that the end result is going to be really nice. The part between this I want to have brown. I want to have brown here again. Uh, the top here I want to have green. And I think I want another yellow. Probably right here at this side. As you can see it's dry a little bit right now. So we're just going to do a second layer. And as you can see it's already more yellow than it was before. You just need to be patient a little bit, which can be hard sometimes. All right, so as you can see, I've been doing layer after layer and it's starting to look very nice. The color is really good. You just have to wait a little bit until it's dry and then do the second layer. All right, as you can see, it's really getting this old authentic look. I think I'm gonna apply one more layer and then we're good. Alright, so it's time for brown right now. So we're just gonna start over here on this side. This is not brown, this is red. Okay, so I now started doing the brown. Of course, we're gonna paint these two. And we're gonna do the exact same thing as we did with the yellow, like layer, layer, layer. Alright, so here is our helmet so far. Um, as you can see, we already have the brown, we have the yellow. Um, the only thing we still have to do is the green, which is going to be here. Um, and then on this side, of course, and right there, and right here on the back. Okay, so as you can see right now, I am doing the green. And I know the green looks very ugly on camera right now. Um, it looks way too light green and blah, 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 blah. But again, I can assure you that the end result is going to look amazing. All right, so this is the result so far. And I know on camera it looks very strange. Uh, these colors look very weird. Um, but right now we're gonna actually uh, make the black lines between the colors. It's gonna look a lot better after that. And also we of course still have to age the helmet and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I am going to start doing the black lines. Let's just start right here. Like these have to be black lines is gonna go this way it's gonna go down and there we go and we're just gonna do that a few times from this point I'm gonna go to here Well, this is where we are right now. You can see all the lines are there, but we still have to apply a second layer for sure. Um, but do you see how much of a difference it is when you actually make the lines? Like this looks amazing. So let's not waste any more time and continue with the second layer. All right, so here is the result of our helmet so far. I am very, very happy. It looks very nice. Um, I decided to only do two layers of black paint. That's enough. All right, so here we have our helmet and um, the paint at this moment is done. I'm, I'm done with the paint. All right, so it's time to age the liner a little bit. I'm gonna use linseed oil for that. It's gonna make it nice and dark. Woo! Well, that was not my intention, but yeah, stuff happens, you know. Oh, well. 
That was totally intentional. It's okay though. I wanted to oil this helmet in completely anyway, so. We're gonna age it more later, but for now this is okay. Now we're gonna age the outside of the helmet. All right, so here is our helmet. And what we're gonna do now is age it. We're gonna damage it, basically. Yep. Believe me, this is the best way of aging a helmet. Just kick it. So when you think about it, That was definitely not what I was thinking about. Anyways, if you would use a helmet like this every single day in the trenches, you would hold it here and stuff like that, and the paint will fade away. So you could use some sandpaper, some very, very light sandpaper, and just go around the edges, make it look worn. Like, don't scratch it like unnaturally. You wanna be very gentle and be quick. Like, if you do it slow, it's gonna look fake. Just do it quick and make the edges look worn. See? You're gonna see the actual steel collar and it's gonna look very nice. Alright, so the helmet has a lot of damage at this point. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use the very fine sandpaper and use it all over the helmet a little bit. Like not too much, just a little bit. So it seems like it's been handled a lot. Alright, so this is what we have right now. As you can see, the colors are faded a little bit and it looks really nice. You can see all the scratches and everything on it. it looks very historically correct. And there is one more thing that I want to do to make it even more better. Okay, so we are going to make this helmet even more historically correct. And we are going to do that by using mud from my trench. Here we go. I'm just gonna make it wet first. This just gives you an excuse to play in the mud again. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put this mud all over the helmet because of course in the trenches everything was muddy. Also, they use mud as camouflage because that blends in with the environment. Okay, so here is our helmet. Almost completely dry as you can see. So all we still have to do is basically clean it up again. Very, very happy with the result. Um, look at this. This looks very historically correct. A three-tone German World War I camouflage helmet um, with drench mud on it. Um, it looks very, very good. And the inside, as you can see, is now aged more as well. I uh, just use some shoe polish. Of course, you can age it as much as you want. Um, there are lots of different ways to age leather, but um, I think this is good enough. For now, this looks really, really nice. Look at that. That looks amazing. Tell me this doesn't look historically correct. Imagine finding a helmet like this in a barn. That is so cool. Attaching the chin strap of the World War One M16 helmet is very simple. Here we have a chin strap and I'm going to show you how it works. On the end of the chin strap there is this buckle and you just grab it like this, goes over this and there you go. It's attached. It's very easy to take it off. You obviously do the exact same thing on the other side right here and there you go. There you have your chin strap and you can adjust the length by these buckles. There are two buckles right there and right there and that's all you uh, have to do. 
So if you want to take it off for some reason, maybe because you want to have room for your gas mask or whatever, you can just take it off like that. And there you go. So very simple. Now we have a chin strap. I really hope you enjoyed watching that project. Um, it was quite a bit of work, but I love the end result. It looks amazing. Our German World War One M16 Stahlhelm. It looks fantastic. Like I already said before, I really like um, this type of camouflage. It's very unique. It's it's typical World War One camouflage, and. Uh, yeah, just looks amazing. Let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite type of camouflage? Could be modern, could be World War I, could be World War II, doesn't matter. Just let me know in the comments below. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, again, I want to apologize that it took so long for me to upload a new video, but you know, sometimes life has a different plan. <laughs> I'm really going to try to make as much videos as possible. Sometimes it's just a little bit hard because you have things on your mind and blah, 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 blah. But I am really going to try my best to make more videos. So if you did like the video, please leave a like and a comment. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and subscribe if you want to see more videos. I got lots of plans for future videos. I'm also really looking forward to go to the United States because I've never been there before. And of course, the thing I'm looking forward to the most is see my girlfriend again. So Caitlin, I love you and I see you soon. Again, thank you guys for watching. I wish you all a very historically correct day and um, I see you all very soon. Tschüss!